Hello, VDOFX here. Have you ever struggled with getting textures to tile in Redshift without the noticeable repetition pattern? I'm sure you have experienced that at some point. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any dedicated node that can get around this. So I decided to create a material setup that can help you get around that and break the tiling pattern. It is called Tile Breaker, a preset material for Cinema 4D and Redshift. It allows you to easily offset and rotate different parts of the texture to introduce variation and get rid of that repeating pattern. To get this preset, just head over to my Gumroad page. The link is in the description below. Search for the Tile Breaker for Redshift listing and click on it to enter the product page. Here you can choose between the free and pro version of the preset. I'll explain the difference between them at the end of the video. For now, if you want to follow along, you can download the free version first. What you will download is a C4D file. When you open the file, you will see a basic scene with a plane and some lights, which you can use to preview the textures. There is also a null object with some notes. But most important is the material, the Tile Breaker Starter material. This is the preset material that is already set up for you to use with your own set of textures. Let's take a look inside. As you can see, it is just a basic setup of a Redshift standard material and linked up with texture nodes for the base color, roughness, bump, and the displacement channels. Controlling all the textures is the Tile Breaker asset that I have created. This node contains options for you to control the tiling of the texture. We will use an example texture to see how this works. First, I will create a copy of this material so that I have a backup for creating more materials. I'll name this new material UV map. I will use this to demonstrate how this tile breaker works. Apply the material on the plane. And let's start the render view. I will work with just the base color channel first and use a UV texture map so that it is easier to see the effect of the tile breaker on the texture. I will put this UV texture into the texture node for the base color. We can immediately see how the texture is now tiled with random offset and rotation. I'll adjust the lighting to make it easier to see. Let's go to the Tile Breaker node. And I'll reset the tiling to 1 in the U and V. And zero out the offset and rotation. We will see the texture in its original form. Increase the tile to 5 and we have our repeating pattern. Let's break this up. I'm going to take a snapshot before any adjustment so that we can compare later. Next, I'll offset the texture in the U direction you can already see the pattern is disrupted. Let's add some offset in the V direction too. This further breaks the pattern up. We can compare back to the snapshot to see the difference. I'll capture another snapshot here. Now, let's add some rotation to push this further. Depending on how much rotation you add, this can either make a big difference or have little impact. Controlling the offset and rotation variation is a simple Voronoi cell noise. You can preview the noise with the noise map output. Connect it to the surface port on the output node. We can generate a new noise map by changing the random seed. The overall scale controls the size of the noise. The blur amount makes the noise blurry, which helps to soften the sharp edges of the Voronoi pattern and blend the texture better. We can keep the blur to a low amount, otherwise the texture will be fading into each other and result in a blurry image. Finally, we can adjust the brightness and contrast of the noise to use more of the black and white values. I usually just increase the contrast to around 0.3. I'll connect back the material to the output. We can see that by changing the settings on the noise, we can get a different result. So play around with the noise settings if you are not satisfied with the result. An important setting to note is the noise scale. The size of the noise can greatly affect the output. A smaller noise size will break up the texture into smaller chunks and introduce a lot of variation, but may lose the appearance of the original texture. Whereas a larger size will have lesser variation and may still have the tiling pattern be visible. So depending on your texture, you may need to mess around with the size until you get something that looks good. Now let's try this out on an example texture. I will be using a ground texture that I downloaded from Ambient CG. I will replace the base color, roughness, and bump textures. I won't use the displacement now. I'll explain more about that later on. With the current settings, we can see that there is no tiling pattern. I'll snapshot this and reset the tiling options. The tiling pattern is obvious now. 
we can start increasing the offset to break the pattern again. Comparing between the before and after, I feel that offsetting the texture is enough. But we can add rotation too. Now we are good to use this for a project. When using this preset, there is just one issue, and that is the displacement. The displacement texture doesn't seem to respond to the texture offset. Through my testing, sometimes it seems to work, but most of the time it doesn't. As in this case. You can see that even though the texture is not tiling, but the displacement effect is. I just set up the displacement texture node in the material so you can use it if you want. Next, I'll show you how to save this starter material in the asset browser, so you can easily add this material into your project without needing to open this project file every time. Open up the asset browser. Open the folder you want to save the material in. Or create your own folder by right-clicking in the folder section and select Create Category. For this example, I'll use my own folder to save. Go back to the material and simply drag and drop it into the folder. Click OK to save the asset, and that's all. You should see the item in the folder. We can create a new project and a plane. Now we can just drag the material from the asset browser onto the plane. Open the material and replace the textures. Now I will use a concrete texture set, also downloaded from Ambient CG. Adjust the settings to break the tiling and we're good to go. That's it for this demo of the preset. Back on the Gumroad page, there are more details on this preset and examples, which you can take a look. As mentioned earlier, there are two versions of this preset, one free and one pro version. The free version is limited only to the texture offset, which is enough to already break the tiling pattern. But if you want more options, the pro version allows you to add rotation and edge blurring. It's a paid version, and by buying this, you'll be supporting me in my works and allow me to create more products and content. Do check out my other products on Gumroad too. I hope you find this tile breaker useful. Leave comments below if you have any, and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials and content. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.